about something that's just horribly sad. And I want you to think about this. I want you to understand that each of these blocks represents one pound. We started an investigation where a child was starved to death. Died of long-term starvation. And what shocks our conscience is nothing in this world is more important to us than our children and their growth and their ability to thrive. They're the most important, precious thing in our life. They're innocent and they depend solely upon us for everything. So this little girl, this baby girl was born at six pounds and 10 ounces. Six pounds and 10 ounces. This baby, when it died, weighed nine pounds. This baby should have weighed 32 pounds. This baby was born on July the 25th, 2019. Between July the 25th, 2019, and when they took the baby to the doctor in January of 2020, the child had gained three pounds, was thriving. Listen closely to what I'm going to tell you. Between January the 2nd, 2020, when the baby went to the doctor for the last time, and May the 10th, 2022, which was two years and four months, that sweet baby gained one ounce. One ounce. So the baby should have been 32 pounds. The baby should have been talking, putting sentences together, asking questions, telling that my diaper needs to be changed, running, jumping, and playing. When this baby died on May the 10th, she couldn't stand. She couldn't talk. She couldn't walk. This baby never got to be this big because of these people. This is mom at 35. This is dad at 57. Allegedly, he was her counselor at church along the way. Oh, he weighed 213 pounds. Oh, Rhonda Tillman, mom, weighed 144 pounds. Did I mention to you that she's pregnant, according to what she says, about four months pregnant? There was food in the house. Regis Johnson, the dad, told us, oh, the baby ate a sandwich yesterday and some chicken nuggets last evening and drank, well, that's just a bald face lie. When we did the medical examination, that child had zero food in her stomach and only slight traces of fecal matter in the intestines. The child suffered long-term starvation. Now I want to call your attention for those of you who remember the Sally Struthers commercials where she was raising money for the children that were malnourished, malnourished and starving. And you'd see those horrible pictures of those children. Keep in mind, they were still alive. This baby laid in a, pit, a playpen made out of an inflatable swimming pool and starved absolutely to death. Regis works for his brother at a business called First Class Car Getters on Highway 1792 between Haines City and Laughlin. And that's allegedly where they lived. We know that the doctor did the things that he should have. We know that there's investigations underway. We're doing a lot more investigation. There's a lot of questions we can't answer because we're early into the investigation. There's some questions we can't answer because they're protected by DCF regulations. These folks are both charged with aggravated child neglect at this moment in time. Obviously, it is our intention to charge them with the appropriate murder charges, but we've got to do medical investigations, the medical examiner's got to complete some work before we file those charges, but we got them into jail just as soon as we could. The baby didn't thrive because they wouldn't take her to the doctor. They wouldn't feed her. On this fateful morning, the father of the year called 911 and said, that his child wasn't breathing. 
We talked to mom. She said she'd called 911 before, but they were busy. What? They made admissions. Their action. But I want you to understand that this baby, this little girl, this child that should have been thriving, gained one ounce in two years and four months. If you can imagine looking at such a heartbreaking sight, basically it was just bones and skin. There aren't adequate words to explain our frustration and our sadness, but our folks are going to do a complete and thorough investigation, and we're going to large lodge all of the charges that the law allows against this mother and father, against these murderers who starved this child to death. We're going to lodge all the charges that we can, and the investigation is still underway because we have probably the same questions you do. Did no one else see this child in this condition? That's under investigation at this moment in time. This child just didn't get sick and pass. People had to watch this child who should have been up running and playing and talking to mama and dad and, you know, I've got a two year old grandchild and a three year old grandchild that are thriving and happy and climbing all over us when they're with us. And this child couldn't talk, couldn't walk, couldn't communicate. There aren't adequate words to express my frustration. Are there any questions? The message to the community is if you don't want your child, take it to a hospital, to a fire station, to anyone and say, turn my child and I'm done with it. Don't starve the child. Don't starve the baby. It is unbelievable what, what we saw. There were no other children in the home, but you can be sure of one thing. Presuming she is pregnant, like she says, four months pregnant, she won't have the chance to starve another one. Because our goal is that she's locked up. And when it's time to have this baby, she will have had prenatal care while she's in our custody. We have no evidence that the child's, that she or, or the, ch the, the child to be born has had any medical care. But she'll start getting it today. And when that child's born, then that child will be placed with some loving people that will raise and take care of that child. Because our goal is she's never out of prison again. She won't get another chance to starve a child to death. The, this investigation is underway. We don't know what we don't know about the DCF investigation at this time. I can tell you this, that there will be a complete and thorough investigation on our part. And certainly we're going to request the same on DCF's part. But I stopped short of throwing stones at this point in the investigation at DCF because DCF is called to hundreds of events every day. And I know and have watched them do remarkable work here. I don't know what happened in this case, but you can be sure we're, we're going to find out. Not that I'm aware of. Keep in mind, mom's 35, dad's 57, and apparently he was one of her counselors at church sometime back in the day. Regis is R-E-G-I-S Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, and Aranda is A-R-H-O-N-D-A, Tillman, T-I-L-L-M-A-N. We are exceptionally frustrated because, obviously, someone had to see the child in this condition. And if this child was only three months old and looked like that, child looked, something was wrong. Even if you didn't know that this child was three years old. You could, you looked at this child and you gasp, you gasp at the horror you saw and the pain this child went through. Well, I can tell you as a Christian, the only solace I get of this whole thing is this child's no longer starving or sick, but he's, that she is in the arms of Jesus where as Christians, we believe she's well and healthy again. And what would heaven be like if you didn't have children? They will be at first appearance in court today and we'll be there to inform the judge and show the judge the photographs of this baby, this child, this sweet little girl, and encourage a very high bond until we can get far enough in the investigation that we can bring the appropriate murder charges. Can I include murder charges? Excuse me? Sorry, I don't know if I can 
Not today. Not today. We still have medical work to do. So we're charging aggravated child abuse today and asking for a high bond until we can finish our investigation. The, the official calls of death will not be ruled upon by the medical examiner until the completion of all the investigation, but it's evident to us that it's long-term starvation. I don't know what the criminal records are. We'll get that for you. Now that's that's very important. Every every person in society is a first reporter. So no matter who you are across the state or nation, if you see a child that's being neglected or abused, you have not only an ethical and a moral obligation, but a legal obligation in Florida to report. But tell someone this baby. This baby can't speak. Think about it. When we have these beautiful children, these beautiful babies, they're totally dependent on us to eat, what they wear, how they grow, how they thrive. They're totally dependent on us. And these folks starved this beautiful little girl to death. Who, whoever called DCF, that, that is confidential, and we're not allowed to release it. But the people in the community that may be watching this certainly know the reputation of my homicide team. Who, who They are simply the best team in the world. They're in a full court press to gather all the details and do a complete and thorough investigation. But if you see something or hear something, for God's sake, say something. Children's lives are at stake if you don't. Any questions? I think it's one o'clock. Okay, thank you very much.